Hi, I'm Ed with Demco um, here in Boyden, Iowa. Um, here to introduce you to our one of our newer model grain carts, our 1322. Uh, the 1322 is the larger version of the 1100 bushel, which is much the same design. Uh, Demco has actually introduced uh, what I like to call our next generation of grain carts here within the last three to four years. Uh, we'll actually be introducing a couple more models again here in 2020. Uh, I want to start around the front of this cart because there's some things that we do differently than what other companies do. Um, we'll get into this a little bit more later, but the power takeoff shaft has a slip clutch on the end attached to the grain cart. The slip clutch is of such that uh, it works very similar to a slip clutch that you would have on your cordless drill. So once it exceeds a set rate, let's just say it's a 15,000 pound clutch, the load exceeds that, the clutch is going to ratchet, uh, similar to your cordless drill, and in order to reset it, you shut your PTO off on your tractor and it's back to a 15,000 pound clutch. Some of our competitors uses a style clutch that has fiber discs in it, has a, a, a spring cupped washer that gives the tension. Well, when you're spinning this thing at 1,000 RPM and something stops and causing the uh, uh, clutch to slip, you create heat in a real big hurry. So what will happen is those fiber discs will melt to a certain extent. They're going to wear off. The cup spring washer may uh, get hot enough where it loses some of its tension. So now you go back to running your cart, you clear the, the problem, fix the problem, and the uh, clutch may still be a 15,000 pound clutch, it may be less, you don't know. With the uh, slip clutch that Demco uses, we know we're going to be at a 15,000 pound clutch. Okay. This is the style of slip clutch that Demco uses on all of our grain carts. Obviously, uh, there'll be more than one size depending on the size of grain cart that we're talking about. But this slip clutch does two things for us. One, if it exceeds the desired setting of this clutch, it'll slip. It's going to slip and it's going to ratchet similar to what you would see on a or here on your cordless drill that you've got in your shed. The nice thing about that, it's going to exceed the 15,000 pounds we'll use for a number. Uh, it ratchets, you shut your PTO off on the tractor and it is reset at 15,000 pounds. Some of our competitors will still use a shear pin uh, some will use the older style flip clutches that have the fiber discs in with the spring cupped washer. The problem with those, uh, when they heat up, you're wearing your fiber discs so they're getting thinner. You may be heating up your cupped spring washer enough to where the tension is no longer the same. So you don't know if you still have a 15,000 pound clutch once it slips. This, we know it will be. The other thing that this does is when you shut the PTO off on the tractor, the newer tractors today, as you know, have a brake on that PTO. So when you shut the PTO off, it stops right now. The thing that's happening with these grain carts, as these augers are getting bigger, larger in diameter, heavier, thicker material, they get to acting a little bit like a flywheel. So when that PTO on the tractor stops right now, that auger wants to keep, coast, keep turning. It wants to coast to a stop. This clutch is going to allow that to happen. So what that does for you is it gives you less uh, pressure uh, on the brake, PTO brake on your tractor. So we're not taxing that portion of your tractor like some of the other brands out there. From there, something that we do differently is we run into a gearbox, or as some people will call it as a transmission. So we're going to have one shaft going in. And we're going to have two shafts going out. Well, the one shaft is going to go up and drive our drag auger. The lower shaft, coming output shaft on the box, is going to go to the gearbox that runs our vertical auger. This eliminates a lot of the maintenance that you're going to see with our competitors that are running uh, a belt drive or a chain drive where you have uh, tighteners, you have pulleys, you have things that require maintenance. This particular model of Demco carts, in the fall, you're getting ready to, for harvest, you check the gearbox, the gearbox is full oil, the oil is clean, 
you're set to go. You're good for the season unless you start seeing some oil leaks. The, dri the drives, um, the drive shafts here are a little difficult to see. We'll try and get some pictures here with the shield off. But this shaft here is going to our right angle gearbox that's going to drive the vertical. And this one drives our drag. There's a knuckle on each end of these uh, drive shafts, requiring again very, very low maintenance. This is kind of the working side of the cart. Um, get into this a little bit more, but this auger flighting in this cart, this lower section is all double flighted. Uh, what that does is it gives us a very efficient intake of grain that's being delivered by the drag logger on this cart. Um, the Posi drive coupler, uh, Demco came with this probably a dozen years or so ago. Uh, it's been very popular, it's been very uh, bulletproof for us. We're starting to see other manufacturers that are mimicking something very similar to that. Um, we'll show you that a little closer in a little closer video um, shortly the other thing you notice is this section of tubing extends past this steel plate here it's re recessed so as this comes together you have a nice overlap seal so you're not going to have grain leakage in this hinge area also have the clean out door here for end of season Something bad happens, something plugs up, easy, easy access to get to that. We'll talk to you a little bit more in depth on our Posi Drive coupler. Uh, we came out with this design, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, and it's been working very, very well for us. Uh, it's working so well, we're seeing some of our com com competition start to come with something very similar to it. What this does is you're going to have the lower auger half and the upper half as they come together they are going to be engaged. Uh, if I'm really careful, I can probably set this up on its points like that, but in the real world, as that auger is swinging over, there's a little enough vibration, it's gonna settle right into place. <clears throat> so now when you kick your power takeoff on in the tractor, you don't have that wind up and slamming into gear like some of the models, brands that have a single pin, uh, maybe they got a double lug. Here is basically engaged right from the get-go. We have some competitors out there that have addressed the issue of the wind up and slam of the auger halves engaging uh, <clears throat> by putting a rubber torsion in that area to absorb that shock load. Uh, I like to refer to that as they, they addressed it. We actually eliminated that banging in of the two auger halves. Over on this side, um, we have clean out gates for end of season. You simply open up the piece, give them a slide, open up your gate, and you're good to go. This cart is available with a track option uh, or the tire option that we have here in this particular model. We got our 125050 R32 tires with the 20 bolt hub. Um, that is an uh, option upgrade. Uh, standard would be your 10 bolt. Most dealers that uh, I've been calling on are stocking these carts with the 20 bolt hub to give you that additional strength that's needed for carts of this size. Um, this cart is going to come standard with five way bars. There's gonna be four on the axle, one on the, on the hitch. Then we also offer, we'll offer multiple types of Councils or means of gathering the data that these wave bars are going to give you. On the end of this auger here, we have an adjustable spout, which is standard. This is going to rotate on the end of that uh, auger so that when you're loading in the, the truck, you don't have to be in the right spot every time with the tractor and cart. You've got some flexibility there to, uh, to fill the center of the truck like you're looking for. Um, there's a hydraulic cylinder up in that black box, if you will, and that just pushes and pulls a trolley onto this cable. Um, I'll be honest, when I first seen it, I was mm, not, not super impressed with that. We've been running them for 10, 12 years, and they just work. There's no maintenance to them, they just, they just work. 
Uh, basically, every time we have an issue with something, if they've actually hit something with this spout and done some damage to it. Uh, so I know some of our competitors like to pick on us that that's kind of an old school design. Well, maybe it is, but you know what? It works, and uh, that's what we're here for. Uh, here's our LED spout light. Um, we do not offer cameras as an option. We have had some people ask about that. Um, we feel that most dealers are now stocking their own cameras uh, for sale at their dealership, at, typically at the parts counter. And okay, if we pick one brand and we ship this cart out and your local dealer handles a different brand, it's more cumbersome. Why not buy the camera system through your local dealer so you have the parts and service readily available to you. Here we have the handle of our roll tarp. That is also standard on this. You can get an electric roll tarp option, but it will come standard with a roll tarp. So it's not something uh, that I forget to order for the dealer. Coming over to back to the front, there's a lot of good stuff going on. Our drag auger is going to be setting right in this area, extending out to this area here. This is what we call our sump area. So the drag auger is going to be bringing the grain forward. It's going to actually drop the grain into our vertical auger. A lot of our competition, the drag auger forces that grain into the vertical auger, which can cause some grain damage, but it's also in that transition area, there's a lot of commotion going on and a lot of wear on your auger flight. By dropping it in and having a very efficient intake with our double flighting of our auger, lower auger portion, uh, we eliminate a lot of the wear that you would typically see uh, in a transition area on an auger. Speaking of augers, we use ultra flight flighting. I think we've been using it since 2010 in all of our grain carts. Starting to see a few more companies uh, jump on board with that. Uh, we were the first grain cart manufacturer to start using the ultra flight. What sold me personally on how the ultra flight is better than other flight other brands of flighting used in other brand grain carts is they had an independent company do a side-by-side -side test and what that test consisted of was they took a section of ultra flight a section of edge flight flighting is what they used in this test um, built a fixture they lowered them into a tub of touch crushed granite and just let it turn just let it turn 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 the independent company came back with ultra flight wearing 50% better than the edge flight. Edge flight is decent flighting, not going to bad mouth it, but the one characteristic that it has that ultra flight doesn't have is they have the harder outer edge, inch or two wide, and you have your auger core, and the metal from here to that core is not as hard as the edge. So what will happen, can happen with that flighting as it wears in this seam area, uh, that will wear through. Your hardened edge now will ribbon off, as the industry says. When that hardened edge ribbons off, you're no longer going to be able to use the flighting. So you paid for that hardened edge and you can't use it. Ultra Flight is basically designed a machine that can roll harder steel. I'm sure there's more technical terms than that, but to me, this is more understandable. Um, like I say, we've been using it since 2010, and we've been very, very pleased. Customers have been very satisfied with it, and uh, we will continue to use it at this point. Right here is our indicator for how far our gates are open on the inside. Keep in mind, we do it a little bit different. We have our auger flighting laying on the bottom of the cart, but we have an A-frame roof over top of that with doors that will open and close. So our auger is not exposed while you're transporting this cart. The only time we're gonna get grain to the auger is when we actually open the gate. What that does for us, on the other brands that have the exposed auger, that auger screw 
fills up with grain at the back of the cart. It can't take any more going forward, so you're going to have a grain cart that's going to empty from the back to the front. So we run into a situation where you're topping off a truck and you are going to unload a half of that grain cart. Now the back half of the cart is empty, the front half is still full, you just transferred all your weight onto the drawbar of your tractor, which if you got a good drawbar, you're fine, but it even will make a difference going through the field as far as how stable you feel. Uh, we're seeing guys that are running through the field a lot faster than what they once did. Um, you know, 10, 15 miles an hour is very common nowadays. So you get kind of that bucking effect that goes along with that. You're not gonna have that with a Demco because as you start to unload this cart, the gates are gonna open and you're gonna feed grain the entire length of the drag off. So you're gonna see our cart unload from the top down, not from the back to the front. So it's gonna keep your weight distribution a lot better than what it does. Now, what happens if we plug things up? You know, Belt drive systems, you know, you just unhook the belt or uh, release the tension on the belt. If we have one of those problems on our gearbox slash transmission, we have a handle here where we can disengage, by pushing this in, we disengage the drag auger. Now you can run your vertical auger empty and reset your, your, uh, your gear, your shift and engage your drag and you should be fine. Uh, there again, if you do have a problem, we do have the access to clean out some grain if need be. Uh, we've done some testing with this and we have in, uh, intentionally stopped the auger with a load on it and started it back up and it, it's been, a, been fine. Getting to super wet corn could be a problem. We've tested the drag corn. Drag corn. A little more about the auger itself. When we fold this auger out, this auger is gonna come 11 foot ahead of the front of the box. So when you're sitting in your tractor, this auger is right out here. Uh, before we went to designing this cart, we spent a lot of time talking to dealers, talking to farmers at farm shows, farm visits, whatever, asking the question, guys, what do you wanna see in this next generation of green cuts? So we compiled that information, uh, went to our engineers and said, this is what we need. And I think they did a very good job with that. One of the things that was mentioned many times is they want the forward reach of the auger. It's much easier uh, on the grain cart operator to look out his side window versus looking way out back here. Uh, the other thing that was talked about a lot is, you know, we like the, height, the clearance that we have on our Demco carts. Some days when it's very windy, uh, we're losing some crop because the wind's blowing them around. We need to have an auger that either has a longer spout or some way to lower that closer to the truck. So what we've done on this cart, 1122 and 1322, is we come 11 foot forward. This hydraulic cylinder here is going to raise and lower our vertical auger by almost four feet, it's 47 inches. That allows you to clear your truck, clear the exhaust on the trucks, whatever the case might be. And on those windy days, or a little bit of an inexperienced driver, cart operator such as myself, I'm gonna lower it down so I got a little more control of what I'm doing. So with the forward visibility that you're gonna have, the adjustable up and down on the spout, the adjustable and on the spout, you can put that grain in that truck wherever you would like it. When this auger folds out, the hydraulic cylinder here is a two-speed cylinder. So it's going to come out of the cradle gently. It's going to speed up and then slow down at the end of the stroke so it's not slamming the, all that weight uh, into position for unloading. Just gives us a little more control of swinging that much weight around, but yet speeding up the folding process so you're not waiting on the end to wait, or sitting on the end waiting for the auger to, uh, to 
fold back into the transport position. Um, we talked about the double flighting section on this entire section of auger. The first three foot of this auger is also double flighting. Again, anytime there's a transition of grain, we want to be very efficient to in the intake portion of that part of the grain movement to lessen auger wear. Um, to operate this cart, we have a pendant, and we'll show you more on that later, a little more detail, um, that all the functions, all the hydraulic functions are done electric over hydraulic. So you're going to use one set of remotes on the tractor, you're going to engage the hydraulics on the tractor, and you're going to leave them engaged. Everything else is going to be done with a pin and push of a button. <clears throat> so when you get ready to come up to the truck, ready to unload, you need to swing the auger out. You just push a button and it's going to bring it forward into the working position. You do not have to hold anything. Just push the button and it will come into the working position. And the same thing when you are finished unloading, hit the button once and it will bring the auger back. Only thing you have to keep in mind with that is because of the raise and lower that we have on this auger, we do have to bring it up to full height before it will fold. There is a safety feature on there that will not let you fold the auger until this is in the up position. Uh, the lights on this cart are all LED. All of our grain handling equipment now has LED lights, uh, much more uh, uh, better quality than the incandescent bulbs, less chance of bulb burning out, not working maintenance, that type of thing. The other thing that we've done starting in 2019 is the stripes on here on our decals on this, on the other side, on the rear, they are made of a reflective material. So we are trying to make you as visible as possible when transporting or working in the field at night. So as soon as some uh, headlights hit it, um, they're gonna see you see you all there. Uh, very nice safety feature that we've included on that.